have to send me a message. Hello, and welcome to Silicon Valley Girls Chat Over Tea. I'm Gloria. And hi there, everyone. I'm Rosetta over here. And so excited to come to you with another one of our chats. Before we get started, uh, just want to remind you real quick, some housekeeping. If you wouldn't mind, if you like this video, we'd love for you to hit that thumb icon. Yes, right there that Gloria's doing. And if you want more of these chats, you can hit the subscribe button and also that bell notification. Remember, we talk about that. Ding, 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 ding. And that just means that you'll be first to be notified when you can watch our amazing chats, our wonderful chats. <laughs> All right, we are Silicon Valley Girls Chat over tea. So what am I drinking today? Today I am drinking organic licorice root and it's by the company Traditional Medicinals. Here you go. Oh, not here you go, because you can't see it. <laughs> well, there you go. You see it there? There you go. Yeah. All right. Ingredients here are, let's see, where are the ingredients? Uh, I don't have the ingredients. You know why? Because I think that the backside was torn off. I don't know. It's called... Traditional Medicinals Organic Licorice Root. And I think if I recall, let me see on the back of this packet. I'll pull one of the packets out. Um, no, it just gives instructions. But anyway, it's just <laughs> licorice root. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and it's uh, delicious. And I've actually had this on a few of our other chats. But, um, you know, licorice is really healthy for you. And it has herbal... Um, it says herbal power soothes the digestive tract and promotes respiratory health. So here you go. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Cheers. Uh, Cheers. While I'm taking a nice big sip, Gloria is going to tell you guys what she's drinking. And I am drinking this wonderful Clipper Natural Fair and Delicious Caffeine Free Chai. 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 I what does it up. say? Chai five? Chai five. Yay. Well, can't really see it. Okay, hold on. There we go. Chai five. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's chai five. Chai All five. right, we see it. We saw it. Go. Okay. <laughs> the ingredients are cinnamon, fennel seed, ginger root, orange peel, licorice root. Licorice, Licorice for my girl. Clover, uh, chicory, and they are all organically grown ingredients. I love a good chai tea. Love, love, nice. love a good chai Very tea. Very nice. So, Me too. Cheers. Cheers again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That yum, is yum. delicious. Just what the doctor ordered. Mm. <laughs> so, as Rosetta said, we're Silicon Valley girls who chat over tea, and we always like to kick off our chats talking about our girl Ellen. It's her final season, 19 is her final, and she always reminds us to be kind to one another and to listen to one another, and then during these times, I think it's very important that we do that. So we're going to start off by talking about um, the people of Ukraine. I, I mean, I see, I see the videos, I see the pictures. Rosetta and I send our heart and our love and our prayers to the families because it's just catastrophic to see how that beautiful community is being destroyed. Yeah, it's, I can't believe that it's, it's this, the, the war is still going on and it's devastating to see every time you turn on the news and they show video of the people in Ukraine, you see just bodies everywhere. Like they yeah. showed this house in the basement and you know, they were hiding in the basement and their bodies just lying there in the basement. So, you know, that soldiers went in there and searched. And as soon as they saw them in the basement, they shot them. Yeah. So that's just, I mean, just to see that the number of dead bodies, yeah, it's like it's like thrown to me. It's it's equivalent to thrown away garbage. That's how absolutely. it seems like. It's absolutely I just see and, it and my heart and, just sinks every time. 
And for soldiers, I mean, I understand, you know, when you're a soldier, you're supposed to, you know, whatever the commander says to do, that's what you're supposed to do. However, that is just very, very devastating what they're doing to the women and the children. I, I just, you know, I believe, I believe in my heart and soul, everyone has to atone for their action. And this war is unnecessary. The soldiers doing what they're doing, it's just horrific. So we pray that the Ukrainians will be okay. And it's really interesting because as a citizen of the United States of America, I think President Biden has done a lot to help. And there was a, uh, we have a television show called 60 Minutes. And there was an interview of the president of Ukraine, President Zelensky, and he kind of alluded to the fact that the United States had not done enough. The United States, we cannot put, you know, boots on the ground because that says to Putin, we are at war too. Can't do that. So he has been doing what he can. He's given um, um, army um, equipment like helicopters and tanks. And, you know, he has donated up to today about 1.7 billion with a B dollars. And he's getting ready to send them another 700 plus million dollars to help yes he is that made me feel a little weird because i thought to myself if you don't see what we're doing to help then you're missing the picture and there are other countries where where are the other countries where's 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 mother queen mother where is she why can't she do something to help because it just seems it just seems like a lot of times when countries are in uh dire straits and they need help they always turn to the u.s it seems like we're the first go-to for all the other countries. I mean, we do have a lot of resources and things that we can offer other countries, but why? you're right, Gloria. What, where is the, the queen in this? Yeah, because, you know, in, in all practicality, her countries are closer than we are. They would go through them to get to us. And it's like everybody has to figure out what to do and how to do to make it safer. So we will continue to keep an eye on this. Um, if you want to uh, check this out, you can look at any source uh, for information. I wouldn't recommend Fox News just because Fox News is being broadcast in Russia and um, because they like what Fox News says, it, that Fox News, based on what Putin is saying, um, Fox News is like in lockstep with his beliefs. And so they are actually broadcasting that there. But if you want, check out CNN, uh, MSNBC, CBS, ABC. You know, there are a plethora of people and a lot of the reporters for those different organizations are in town and they're actually near Ukraine. So just try and keep an eye on it and send them lots of love and positive energy because they really need it. Yeah, I'm always keeping them in my thoughts and prayers every day. Yes. So, you know, as I was mentioning, we are always looking at things that Ellen does. And she's like, we shared with you, we've been a little surprised. She's been doing a lot of um, uh, host, guest host. So Candy Burns, who is one of the housewives of Atlanta, she is, Candy has been around. She was uh, with a group called, um, I think it's Escape. And she, but I know she's a songwriter and she wrote the song for TLC, uh, Don't Want No Scrubs. And so she, she's a very affluent person. So she was the host and she had the opportunity to highlight a single mom. Her name is Courtney. Courtney has two kids, Peyton and Joe. And Peyton started having um, health issues. She was losing her vision. So her mom decided to become an advocate for kids by becoming a special education teacher. So to highlight her contributions, Candy and the organ, uh, Candy on behalf of Ellen, and the organization CARES, um, they donated $10,000 to Courtney to help with her and her family. I thought that was beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. I love it. I mean, that's the one thing I'm going to miss when Ellen leaves. Well, besides that, but this is one of the things that me and Gloria love, 
is the fact that she highlights everyday heroes and citizens that we normally don't hear about, which is right. something that I'm going to miss. But hopefully she'll have it on her you know, Facebook page or Instagram page, and we can share with you as well. Exactly. So let's talk American Idol. American Yay. Idol. Yay! Have you guys Yay. been watching so, it? Yes, I have. What do you think of this season? Um, I'm enjoying it. And this is the first year that they they went to Hawaii. Well, it's not the first year they've gone to Hawaii, but it's the first year that they're allowing the um, American population to actually vote on who goes through after the Hawaiian experience. Because usually they yes. just have Hawaii and then the judges pick the top 24. Exactly. Yes. So the, the, it's been a little the, different. Yes, it's slightly different. And I like it. And what I do like is I have three top people that I'm loving after the two rounds because they have 24 contestants and right. they did two rounds on Sunday and sorry, yeah, Sunday and Monday. So Sunday was Jimmy Allen, who was the mentor. And on Monday was BB Rexa, who was the mentor. And there were three people that really stood out to me. One was Tristan Gressett from Alabama. If you remember him, he was on Sunday night. He's the um, the rocker with the slightly long hair and the mustache. I yes. love him to death because I think he's ready. He is so stage ready. He knows how to perform. He knows how to, his voice is really, really good. And he just gave a really great pre, um, entertaining, uh, what do you call it? Piece or mu whatever he did when he got on stage, he was amazing. Then the second person I liked was on day two, was uh, Kataya Love. She was from Baltimore, Maryland, and she's the lady with the short hair. And she sung the Shaka, was it the Shaka Khan song, if I can remember? Yes, and yes. She, she is another one that I think she did amazing because she was so confident and her moves and her dancing. She has, I think she has the it factor. So she's another one. And the third one, he's a bit hyper, but he's Cameron Whitcomb. He's the yes. one with the short, actually, if you look at him, he's hyper, but he's a cute looking guy. He really is. And he has a really nice voice. I love his voice. He can actually sing. It's just that he's a bit too hyper and I don't yeah. know how they're going to tame him down. And the mentor, BB Rexa, did try and help him and gave him yeah. some hip tips and tricks on how to maybe calm it down, get a mic stand and and have your arms, your hands around the mic stand. So that kind of gives you a bit more control and not so wild. But on the actual night of the performance, he did his usual backflip and he started yes. going all, going crazy. And the judges, I mean, did you see Katie's face? When yes. She was, <laughs> I, I mean, so I mean it's, it's scary because, you know, um, I, I used to, well, I still like the group. Uh, there was a group called Heat Wave, and the one of the lead singers used to run across the stage and do backflips and somersaults and all that, and he broke his neck on stage doing that. Wow. So every time I watch him do a flip, I stop breathing because I'm like, oh, dear God, please let him be okay. And I know he thinks it's cool and everything, but that's dangerous. And that's the look that Katie gave him was, oh, my God, he's got to stop doing that. Yeah, he's a bit too much. But those are my three top um, picks right now. We'll see how it goes. But let me hear what your top picks are, Gloria. Okay, so I agree with you. Um, I love Jimmy and BB. I just thought Jimmy, I didn't know anything about Jimmy Allen until he did Dancing with the Stars. And I have a newfound respect for this young man. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And when people talk to him and they express how they feel, I, I just love him. I thought he was a phenomenal mentor because, you know, like he would make a joke and he'd say, I'm glad I'm not competing now because I would never make it. <laughs> um, I just think that he is he is just such a good person because he is trying to help them be the best that they can be and to draw things out of them. He so, lost his mother, right? Which is why he was so sad when when yeah. some people came on and said they'd lost a member of their family and their mother as well. Yeah. Yes. So it was just really, really hard. So there's a young man named Christian Guriadino. I love him. He, you look at him and he just looks like kind of a dorky guy and he opens his mouth and he's got a little soul. I'm like, <laughs> oh, who are you? I love him. 
I love him. He um, he could do R and B. He could, you know, if they really wanted him to, he could probably do a little, you know, uh, country balladier because he's got such a good, strong voice. I love him. Um, and then there's a young lady. Her name is uh, it's like Katie Rob Love, and I like her personality. She has short little. Uh, blonde hair. She's uh, a, a little black girl, or she could be, you know, mixed blend. I don't know. I just, I love her personality. And she was, I mean, she is a performer. She was all over the stage. Because one of the things that I found with um, American Idol is not so much the person that sings the best, because there are people who have won in previous years. And I'm like, how did you beat her? Or yeah. how did she beat him? Because vocally, I don't get it. So I've learned that they also look at performance. So for me, those two individuals are pretty up and coming. So like you, I'm holding my breath. I don't know who's going to make it to the next step, but I'm excited to see. And you're right, because Lionel Richie always says, yes, you can sing, but I'm also looking for the entertainment factor. Can you yes. perform on stage and entertain the crowds? Because the crowds go off of your vibe and you're the one that actually leads the whole vibe of the evening. Exactly. So we will keep watching and we hope you will too. And you can we put wanted... below in the description or the comments who you like, who are your favorites. Yes, please share and why. So here's an add a girl to judge Katanji Brown Jackson. She was confirmed by a 53 to 47 vote to be the next Supreme Court Justice. For the three Republicans who stepped across the, the, the aisle to cast your vote because she is more than qualified, her qualifications are more than all of the, the, the current sitting judges on the bench. She is more qualified than all of them put together. And for those representatives to do that, I am just, the Republicans, I am just so inspired that we can come back and stop being uh, evil, driven by social media country. Because you gotta get social media out of, out of government. Because it's not about how many tweets and how many likes you get. It's what did you do for your community? So I am very excited. She is the first black woman to ever hold this position. And my goal is as we continue forward that we get the Supreme Court to look like us, the people, all facets, all race, all backgrounds. Exactly, my thoughts exactly. She is the starting point. And from here, it's gonna just go up. I really, really, I'm so glad that she got voted. And for, for her to go through all those rounds of questioning and scrutiny, and she actually overcame that and did a, a really, yeah. really great job. I commend her and keeping her po composure when she was being questioned and everything was, was amazing. I mean, she didn't yes. lose, she didn't go off on the deep end. She didn't start getting annoyed. She didn't, you know, didn't show yeah. any kind of like um, anxiety or anger, which I love. And I think yeah. she's going to do a really good job. And thank you for representing because we need more diversity. We really do. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I tell people all the time, that's why I never would have been confirmed because when, when during the questioning, they asked one, some, some senator said, what does it mean to you to be a woman? I mean, it was just so beneath her. I know. What is the definition of a woman? I'm like, yeah. Hello. I, I was like, dude. <laughs> Don't you know the difference between men and women? So if you don't, you yeah, you should go home. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be <laughs> representing our great country. You should go home. Yeah, you shouldn't represent your state. And my thing is, I hope that the citizens of these states who saw this can step out of just I am a Republican or I'm a Democrat. Um, one of my um, husband's uncle he used to say I vote for I vote for the party not for the person I he made his transition a few years ago I would have loved to have had a conversation with him the way things are going on now and say do you really believe in that statement because they don't believe in you or they would do better 
So this is once again, an opportunity for us to come together and to do better by each other. And this is actually showing because we always talk about our kids, right? And our children showing our children that this is how it's going to be the wave of the future, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the view. So as we all know, they haven't replaced Megan McCain. And what they've been doing is they, because of season 25, they've been bringing back previous uh, hosts like Sherry Shepard, Star Jones, uh, Lisa Ling, uh, Raven Simone. So that part has been really good. My question is, why won't they just give Anna the job? I think that Anna is, she's good. I think that I love her spicy flavor being a Latino woman. Yes. I love the fact that, you know, Sunny has been, you know, shifting a little bit and I don't know why. Um, Anna just doesn't let her, she doesn't let her get under her skin and she gives as good as she gets. So I think they should give Anna the job and then continue to look for maybe another one more person to put on the panel. But then that would mean that there's Whoopi, there's Sarah Haynes, there's Joy. Then if Anna gets on the stage, there's four of them. You think they still need one more, five? Oh, Sunny. So Whoopi, it's three, four. Yeah, there's five. So, so you want them to be the five. Things... There's only four right now. Yeah. So if, okay, say for example, um, I think that they need a person of Asian descent. And the reason then they are a true melting pot. And I don't know if Anna, because she lives in Florida and you know, going to Florida to New York, I don't know if she could do that. And I don't think she wants to move. So she might be the rover where she roves in and out and they could put someone else at the table. Or if she's willing to come in on Monday morning and go out Friday night, maybe she does that. But I just, yeah. I, I'm like, I didn't how do think we... about that logistically. Yeah. She may, you never know. She may have been asked and she's like, no, I don't want to because I live in Florida. It may right. be too much for her. But, she, but you know, you, usually when they call her, she shows right up. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm telling you, she's a, she would be the perfect person because she's yes. just got that spunk in her. She does. And I love her. Even when she calls you an idiot, you're laughing because you're like, oh, and then your brain goes, wait a minute. Yeah, she, she, me makes, she makes light of a lot of things that are serious, like, like the time when people were, some particular person was talking about her weight after COVID yes. and all that. And she knew yes. that and she was making light of it, not to be so so uptight yeah. but she knows she's like, I, she's like don't you think I have mirrors in my house don't you think I know what I look like yeah yeah so I'm like you go girl <laughs> yeah I, I love her so whether you're right they they maybe should have an Asian but I don't know who it would be because there aren't too many they want someone I don't know I mean they find these people and sometimes I'd never even heard of the people they oh, a lot have. of the ones that are on the rotation now for possibility um, I don't, I don't know anything about them. And I know Barbara Walters is still alive and she's still got her, her hand on the, on the, on the gas pedal. She's the one that says gas or break. However, I think that they need to find somebody that is maybe a little younger, you know, like around Raven's age. Cause Raven is, do you believe Raven Simone is about to, you know, I think she's about to turn 40. 40 yeah I can believe it because yeah I know she's she's a baby so yeah but they need you know, someone and, of the younger generation I don't know how old uh um now I'm blanking the blonde lady is I don't know how old she is oh Sarah Sarah Sarah's in her 40s she's in her 40s maybe they need someone that's in their 30s or something mm -hmm. somebody that could have the the their hand or their pulse on what's going on right right absolutely absolutely so we'll keep an eye on that one and we will keep you all informed um we do have one little uh quick update associated with the oscars um will smith of course resigned uh from the academy he's no longer there and then uh, the academy of governors came down with their ruling and he has been banned for 10 years from participating in events. Now, if he's in a movie, that movie can be nominated and he could even win the award. He just can't go and pick it up. Well, I think that's that's pretty fair. Yeah. I'm glad they didn't strip him of his Oscar, nom uh, Oscar award 
for right. um, his performance because he did a really good job and it's been a long time coming. But yes. I just I'm glad that they gave him the the ten years because that I think it fits the the actions he took the negative yes. actions he took. I agree. I agree. Well, girlfriend, girlfriend, let's talk Benifer. So J-Lo was in her home taking a bubble bath and Ben Affleck wanted to propose to her someplace where she didn't know about it, didn't have to worry about paparazzi or anything like that. So he proposed to her by giving her a beautiful green diamond uh, 10 carat green diamond valued at $10 million. I didn't even so, know green diamonds existed. I didn't either, but that diamond is beautiful. Wow. You know? The first time he get, got engaged, to her, he gives her a pink. Now he gives her yes. a green because green is her favorite color. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And he said that he wanted it. Um, the one thing that he says is he wanted it to be unique. And I mean, I, uh, men. Well, sure enough, I it mean, is unique, and the pink one was ever unique heard as of well. A green diamond. <laughs> I mean, who? Only he can come up with something like. Because you would think green, and you think he'll be something like a jade or emerald or yes, something yes. right. But then, he, the, but green diamond. Okay, I'm wondering if that's. I, I need to do some digging into if the. I'm pretty sure green diamond is rarer than pink diamond. I think so. Yeah, I think so. So I'm so, going to do some some investigation on that to see the <laughs> to see because because after the first time he got engaged to her, I went to Tiffany's to see if they had any pink diamonds. And they said, we don't carry it because it's too expensive. So they had to look it up online. <laughs> right. Wow. Um, I, I, I hope the last time they were engaged four days before they were to say their I do's. They broke it off and they broke up because it was just so much media and so much this and that. So my hope and prayer for them this time is that they, they figure out a way how to do it without all of that. They, they've both been married. JLo's had the dress. She's had all of this. She actually created a separate website and I think it's called the JLo um uh, something.com but she has her own place where people can come and find out about the wedding and I'm like okay that's nice however remember you let people and social media and and the press take you and this man that you love and break you up so maybe this time you know I was telling my husband I mean they've had all the big fluff and fluff and fluff what I would do is I would schedule um, a barbecue and I would say uh, catered by some high-end chef. So people know, don't come over here looking like raunchy, raunchy, dress up a little bit, dress nice. And then we would just get married. Backyard barbecue. <laughs> I wouldn't try and re, I wouldn't try and do the wedding because I mean, I can't imagine what it's like where everywhere you go, there are helicopters following you. There's paparazzi following you. Well, I, I wouldn't mean, even do a backyard barbecue then. I would even <laughs> tell anyone what I'm doing. I would have a secret location where nobody knows because well, you see, know once it's going, once it's going to go uh, on any social media, it's going to go viral, and you know the paparazzi are like sharks. They'll be there trying to figure out where it is. So if well, I see, that's you... why I'm saying, you know, just schedule something. I called it a backyard barbecue, but something where you tell your friends, you know, this is where we're going. This is what's going to happen. And let everybody be out and about, but different. The thing is, is you run the risk that somebody's going to sell the story because people, you know, for a couple well, of hundred there thousand you go. dollars. So they have to, they have been celebrities that have had really tight, um, closed lipped weddings where they only yeah. invite people and they have to sign a an NDA uh, or something. Yes. To I'm say that they're not going to that you not allowed yourself they there are weddings that out there, celebrities, they don't allow you to bring your cell phones because they don't That's want right. pictures taken, right? Everyone right. has to leave your cell phone in the basket when you come in and no picture taking, no one is allowed to tell anyone where the location it's all hush hush. And I think they would do that if it was benefit. Yes. And they would just yeah. have their true, real, real 
select few friends that they would invite. That's the best way and, to go, I think. And and that's what's most important is for them, you know, for them to have the life that they want and the love that they want. And, you know, they're both doing movies. You know, Jennifer is doing music. They've got a lot going on. Her, her teenagers are, you know, getting to a certain age. So I'm like, you know, <laughs> I would just, it's a Friday night. Let's go to Vegas. I mean, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't allow people to take my joy. I really wouldn't. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but yes. small and intimate and hush hush is the best. <laughs> Absolutely. Hush hush. Okay. We have breaking news, breaking, breaking news. This just happened. I'm just, I'm shocked. On one hand, I'm shocked. And on the other hand, I'm not. So last week, uh, Elon Musk purchased uh, 9% of Tesla, uh, excuse me, 9% of uh, Twitter. Elon Musk owns Tesla. And it was so he wanted to be on the board, the board of directors of Twitter. So the investment was around $75 million. And Rosetta and I, we talked a little bit about this because I'm like, you know, be careful, be careful. He's not the kind of person who just wants to be part of the team. So less than 20 minutes ago, it hit the news that Elon Musk has put in an offer to buy Twitter. And he says, he thinks it's an extraordinary tool. And when he buys it, he is going to open it up. What that means is that when he put the initial investment of 75 million and he's on the board, he thought he could change the flavor of the company. You know, he doesn't like the fact that they restrict his communication. So he thought, oh, I'm, in, I'm inside now. I can do what I want. Well, the owners of Twitter said, no, you can't. Just because you invested, no. So then he gets mad. So now he's trying to buy the whole company. So they are running surveys now all over the place. And they asked people on ABC News, would you delete your account if Elon Musk owned Twitter? And the last count I saw, 78% of people said they, they would be done. Because it's not going to be a, a platform for disseminating information and communication anymore. It's going to bring all the crazies back. Exactly. I, I have not much to say about that. I just agree with everything that Gloria said. And it's, he, he thought, yes, you're correct. He thought just because he had a percentage in it, but when he couldn't get his way, this is what he's doing. Yeah. Right. And right. it's, it's a no, no. And it's, it's scary. It's scary. But you know, the people of Twitter, they're not, they're not dumb. He's trying to insult their intelligence. Yes, he That's is. That's what I'm thinking. So people in Twitter, you are smarter than that. And uh, this is a big decision to make. Well, actually, I don't even think it's a big decision to make. I think there's no decision to make, really. No. In my I opinion. Mean, yeah. I mean, you own the company. You got you. You restricted his behavior when he was just a consumer. And now he thinks because of that. And then just to let you know how bratty he's being. He said he's going to make the offer. And if it's not accepted, you know, then he doesn't know if he's going to leave his investment. I would have that $75 million check ready for his ass. Bye-bye. I would say toodles. Bye-bye. Yeah. We don't need you and we don't that's, want you. That's what people do when they try and threat empty threats. Well, actually, yes. I don't think it's empty. I think it is a threat just to scare. Yeah. He thinks it's going to scare them, but we know better than that. So. This is just, he's kind of acting like a child. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, he is. And another thing that is really interesting. So Whoopi um, had a segment on The View. And what she did is she said, you know, y'all, I have to tell you this. And this just happened, I think it was last week. So Whoopi said that she owns a Tesla. And Sonny's husband owns a Tesla. So when Whoopi starts talking, Sonny leans into the conversation. 
Whoopi said that if you are in your Tesla and you have any kind of emergency with that car, you are screwed. There is no OnStar diagnostic uh, communication where you can push the button and say, um, the car has stalled out, I need help. They, there's nothing like that on it. Whoopi said that it's say like you're, you're on your way um, to Reno or Tahoe and you're in the mountain area. If that car uh, has a problem, you're stuck. In addition, this is when Sunny speaks up and she says there is no spare tire on a Tesla. What? No spare tire. Doesn't all cars, I thought it was a default for all cars to have a spare tire. Uh, I always thought they all did, but apparently, once again, Elon Musk does it his way. There's no spare tire. So then Whoopi said, and oh, because of the, the structure of the car, it can't be just towed. So you can't just call a tow truck. You need a flatbed. What? So that means on average, whereas maybe, you know, it might take them 45 minutes to an hour to get to you, AAA. Um, and that's the company that would be used as an example. She goes, it could take you three, four hours for someone to get to you, get the car and get you back to safety. Well, so I never wanted to buy Tesla to begin with, and I don't think I ever will. Um, and this is more reason why I will not be buying a Tesla, even if yeah. if I wanted to, I wouldn't because of those reasons. I, and that's well, that's pretty shocking. I don't know why yeah. they don't have these safety features. I don't understand. I mean, how can you have a car and oh, oh, oh. And the thing that Whoopi said also that blew <laughs> my mind, if you have a problem with the car, uh, like say you're out somewhere and you're stranded, they want you to email them. What? Yeah. There isn't a 1-800 number that you can call and say, Hello, people, please. look, I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere. I have to send this email. Yes. I don't even know if there's signal to get emails. Thank you. What Thank if the you. email doesn't send? And yeah. if it does send, what are the probability that someone's going to be reading it within the next five minutes? Yeah. What happens if you're you're out? Okay, so remember when uh, the people back east were having those, sto those snowstorms? Yes. Okay, if you were in a Tesla, and they can't bring they can't bring a charger to you. They can't. I mean, you are just messed up because that, I mean, because some people ran out of gas. Well, they would bring them like five gallons to put gas in the car so that once they were able to move, they move. But if you're waiting for electricity, that's not going to happen. So this is all like, oh my god. So I'm talking to my niece, and she says she has. Uh, she was one of the first females in California to buy the, the Tesla, the, the big pretty one, not the SUV one and not the little bitty one, the one in the middle, the sporty pretty one. So her screen, it has a, it looks like a big, huge iPad. The screen is yes. huge. Okay. It just randomly goes blank, just darkens out. And there's a recall from Tesla about this. She has been trying for seven months to get her car fixed. And it's like you call and they go, oh, okay, we'll make you an appointment. Oh, sorry, that, oh, we're out of parts. She said that she loves the car, but their customer service sucks and she would never buy another Tesla in her life. So now, I mean, I got her conversation and then here comes Whoopi. I didn't even know Whoopi drove a car. Yeah, I didn't even know she drove a car either. And yeah. hearing about this, and she's telling everyone because this is like has to be said, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. So for any of you out there that own a Tesla, I'd love for you to actually comment below as to your thoughts. And have you had anything else happen to you Yeah, while driving the car? Yeah. Because this is crazy. I mean, you would think that some guy like Elon Musk would have all the 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 T's crossed and the I's dotted. Yes. For everything that could happen in the car and for them not to have a spare wheel. That doesn't yeah. make sense. Spare tire doesn't make sense. Yeah. I mean you and, and if the car stops and you're just stuck, you know, like an uh, uh, an American car, if the car stops, you can put the car in neutral and you can push it out the way. Yes. What happens with the Tesla? We don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Okay, now you know. Okay, people. Yes. This is 
scary. Yes, let's keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> we are always, and you know, this kind of ties in, you know, to a lot of things that are going on in the world now. And that has to do with mental health. Rosetta and I spend a lot of time talking about it because just looking at what's going on in the world is just really crazy. I have even, you know, asked uh, friends if they feel being sheltered, you know, when we were going through the initial shutdown with COVID and, you know, being home for, you know, at, at least a whole year and some of us two and a half years, if that is something that has affected people because we have two situations that have occurred. One was a shooting in Oakland, California, where we are, and then the New York subway shooting. So we wanted to just talk a little bit about that mental health and, and how it's showing up in the world. Yeah, Oakland has all, Oakland, if you don't know, is in Northern California, and it's a city that has been over the years a place where a lot of shootings have occurred and it's just random shootings, innocent people getting shot for no reason. And this past Saturday, the girl by the name of uh, Camila Brown, she wasn't even living in Oakland. She was visiting from Antioch, one of her friends. She got shot and we don't know the reason why she got shot, but she got shot Saturday and uh, Saturday night visiting friends. And in the morning, Sunday morning, she died from her, her shot. And it, the statistics are that this marks um, Oakland's 34th shooting of the year, five people shot in a seven hour span. Now let this sink in. Five people were shot in a seven hour span from Friday night to Saturday morning in Oakland. So we are in April and I want to read, that's the statistic right now in Oakland. And another statistic that I heard on The View yesterday was that we're 140 days into 2022 and there has been, get this, 130 mass yeah. shootings in America in this year alone. 130 mass shootings mm. and we're only in April. Yes. So this is pretty crazy. We can go into, this is, a whole new ball game and we can talk we've talked about this glory and i but let's get back to the, these shootings so so this poor 15 year old she got shot and then um you can talk more gloria about the other incident that happened that was very um that was national news yes the um there was a shooting in new york subway the person that did this, what, what he initially did is he took some smoke canisters, he threw them on the ground, he put um, a gas mask on, and then he just started randomly shooting. The blessing is that his gun jammed because if the gun hadn't have jammed, he had a bag with spare clips where he could just take out a clip and put in another clip and keep shooting. Uh, people, one of the things I'll tell you about New York City, um, New York citizens, city citizens don't play. They were help, they were running, but yet they were also trying to help each other. Now, this man, um, Frank James, he after he did this, he went back out into the street and it took him 20 plus hours to find him. The citizens were on lookout for him. They found him. They started calling the police. They told the police where he was. They made sure that someone knew. The thing for me is that the police also received information that said, and they think it was from him talking, um, I'm here, I'm going to be here, this is where I'm going, that kind of thing. So this is not a normal thinking individual. This is not. Um, what, what you would expect of someone of sound mind. And, you know, when they went to get him, you know, he just, you know, surrendered to the police when he left. I mean, just to let you know how crazy this is, he dropped his credit card that he used to rent the U-Haul truck to get 
things set up. I mean, everything he did was just, okay, you're going to do something bad and then you're going to tell everybody what you're doing. It just did not make sense. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, we talk a lot about this whole mental health issue and everything. And, you know, this what this seclusion, pandemic, everything else has heightened it and made people more um, stressed out, more in their head. And we don't know really what what this Mr. Frank James was thinking but yeah. he did he did have a he did have videos online on social media talking about all this and how yeah how he was trying to um he wasn't really i thought initially cuz a lot of the video shows a lot of people right after the shooting immediately afterwards a lot of the the people there were like asians so we thought that, that it was like just targeting asians but he's no. not he's really not no. he's just he was just trying to show that he could you know he could do well, he was saying he... that he doesn't believe that the citizens are being protected. Right. So he wanted to show to show that the subway, how at risk the subway was, how yeah. at risk the citizens were that were out on the street. So in his mind, he thought he was doing a good thing by saying, look, anybody can take you out. We have to be better. That's not how it was received nor perceived. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's the reason he was trying to get across. And thank God he's been found and arrested. And yes. um pretty yes. sure. I'm pretty sure the sentencing will be will be uh life. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it will be. And the the other blessing is that no one uh, uh received fatal uh injuries. Everybody's exactly. okay. nobody nobody died from the, the gunshot wounds. Yes. So thank God for that. Woo, woo so yeah, all, all that we've been, it's, it's really heavy, but we really need to talk about that because it's a big issue, all yeah. these shootings. And on another chat, we'll talk about guns and stuff because that's another topic yeah. that uh, could be opened up for discussion. Yes, yeah, so we want to talk about, you know, revamping the laws because as we've said many times, we are not components of getting rid of all guns. We just think repeat guns are no place for being on the street. And um, there are statistics coming out almost daily about every home that has a gun, what that means. So Rosetta and I, we're gonna do a little bit more research and then one of our upcoming chats, we'll talk a little bit more about how can we safely get guns off the street and yet make the citizens feel protected. So, you know, we're always talking about COVID and we give you statistics about what's going on with COVID, how COVID is showing up in the world. And one of the things, you know, they'll say, um, they'll give you numbers. Okay, so I'll give you some numbers. So there have been 501 million COVID cases, which has resulted in 6.19 million loss of lives. So they, right here in the United States right now, shockingly, there are people who believe that COVID is fake news. They don't believe that there was ever a virus. They don't believe that not a single individual has died. And here in the United States of America, we have lost 985,000 lives due to COVID. So one of the things I happened to be watching uh, the Today Show one day, one morning, and they were talking about the missing unit of COVID that we all don't realize. And I was like, what's that? Rosetta and I, we talk about it all the time. Children. We have, in the United States of America, there has been over 200,000 plus children who have either lost one or both parents. These children are, and oh, and the kicker, they're under the age of 13. So when you're under the age of 13, you go into foster care. If you don't have relatives who can take over and be responsible for you, you, you get put into the system and God help you after that. So they highlighted four children 
who lost their mother, who was a nurse. When the mother lost her life and she worked at a hospital, no one ever called to check on the kids. Nobody did anything related to that. So one of the uh, daughters started talking to her sister's friend's mom. And she's asking her, do you know, how do we do this? I really don't want my uh, uh, 12 year old um, sister to, you know, I think one was 11, one was 12, to end up into the system. How do I save them? And the mom was like, oh my God, oh my God. Now this is a neighbor. She got busy. She set up a GoFundMe. She started working with her to try and figure out what resources are available. Um, they filed paperwork through FEMA to get burial assistance for her mom. And when this was put on the air, they were still waiting for that money. So this is, this is a big issue because we, yeah, we have resources, but if you have the resources, but you don't know where to go or how to get them, that's just not really good. We're gonna put the link to this because it's about a six and a half minute video. I think it's very eye-opening. I think if you watch it, you know, Rosetta and I, we've, we've checked it out and we both think, oh my God, because you, you know, you just don't, you don't think. I have a dear friend, her mom went to sleep last week and didn't wake up. And she was healthy. She was, you know, living her life. Yes, she was of a certain age. So it wasn't like she was a young, young woman. However, she just went to sleep. And when you are a mom and you think about the legacy of what happens to my child, if something happens to me, this is what we're trying to bring to surface and to let you know that there are children who are ending up in the system because of COVID. COVID is something that's just perpetuating throughout our entire life. It's everywhere. Yeah, nobody thinks about the children and we haven't really talked about this because we didn't think about that. No. So we usually what happens is when a parent parents pass away, we think, okay, they have like maybe family that they go to, but what about kids of family of parents that don't have family? Exactly. Right? I mean, exactly. let's say like if I was a child and I was like an immigrant from another country and I was living here and didn't have any family, what then? You're right. Yeah. Kids don't know. They're too young. They don't know what the steps are. And for that child to actually say, I don't want my kids, my sis, my siblings to go to the foster care, that yeah. I wouldn't even thought about that. I mean, no. as a child, do you really think about that? Your siblings I mean, and the oldest care? one is like one is 23, one is 21. I mean, we're not talking, you know, 30. We're no, we're not talking adult and they're working jobs and going to school so that they can get a degree so that they can provide better for themselves and their siblings. I mean, I was just amazed. And, you know, even though the neighbor and because the one of the girls, she said, everybody needs a Miss Jane in their life. She didn't have to do this. This wasn't blood. This was and this is what the United States of America used to be like. If somebody needed something in the neighborhood, you went to the people in your neighborhood and they helped you. And this, this new crap that's going on in the world is just so sad. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought that to light because there has to be more um, ways, easier ways when kids' parents pass from COVID of what they could do. Like nobody goes to the child and says, well, this is what you need to do now. So right. maybe we can do some research. I might do some research as to what is being done and yes. what can children do if they really need the help? Because the children, as we always say, are our future and they, they need to be guided. Even at age 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, yeah. they're, not, they're not grown up yet. They're too no. young to still understand all these like um, legal things that need to be done in their life. Yeah. So in a future upcoming chat, we will talk more about that and see if we can find some resources. Absolutely. Well, as always, we really, really love the time we get to spend together. We are girlfriends and in real life, we are becoming sisters daily. 
<laughs> because we always love to share things and we love to share things with you all. And so I just wanted to thank you very much for the opportunity for us to, to share some time with you. Ellen always reminds us that she feels the love in the room. She sends it back out. She wants everyone to go out and share it. We'll do we the same. The love. We are so grateful that you give us this opportunity to share with you. And we want you to share the love with the world. Through love, we can change the world. We really love can. Love and kindness. Yes. And yes. gratitude. Yes. Ego and gratitude. needs to go home and play. And we need to bring gratitude into the, the world. Yes, we do. Thank you. We love doing our chats and I hope you enjoy watching them. And, and we, we really want to, you know, highlight things, our loves and our likes and just things happening on social because we want to bring more of, you know, what we are interested in. And if you watching have anything you would like us to talk about or things like if you have questions for us, please yes. put it in the comments. We would love yes. to answer them. But thank you so much again. And I want a quick reminder that if you like this video, we'd love for you to hit that thumb icon. And how about subscribing to our channel? If you already are a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification. Below. <laughs> and that means that you'll be the first to be notified when you can watch our chats. But thank you so much again, everyone. We enjoyed it thoroughly. And we are Silicon Valley Girls Chat Over Tea. And, and remember, remember to, to always, always keep smiling. smiling. Thank you Bye. so much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.